Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Foy, and I'm an MD or medical doctor, and I'm a medical school professor and also the founder and director of the Coccyx Pain Center or Tailbone Pain Center here in the United States. You can find me online at tailbonedoctor.com. And uh, this is really uh, going to be just a short discussion about a pilonidal cyst and how you tell the difference between whether somebody has tailbone pain or coccyx pain, coccydinia, you know, pain that's coming from the tailbone itself, and distinguishing that from somebody who may have pain coming from a pilonidal cyst. So first of all, what are the things that they have in common? Uh, well, a few things. Both of them are painful. A pilonidal cyst is painful, and uh, coccydinia is painful. Um, number two, where they're located. Both of them tend to occur uh, in the coccyx area, you know, which is here at the lower end of the spine. Uh, so slightly above the anus, uh, kind of at the back of the pelvis, the lower tip of the spine is the tailbone or coccyx. Pilonidal cysts tend to occur at the back of the sacrum and coccyx. So the area is generally very similar for both a pilonidal cyst and for, and for coccydinia. The other thing that they have in common is that both of them not only are painful, but they can happen after uh, sudden trauma, but they can also happen uh, you know, without trauma. So that doesn't help us to, uh, to tell the difference between the two. Um, so both the, so the, uh, the pain, pain with sitting, uh, with or without trauma, the location, all of that is very similar between the two. So then how can you tell the difference? Um, the main thing is that a pilonidal cyst is different because it's not down at the bony level the way that the coccyx is. So again, you know, for the tailbone or coccyx, we're, we're talking about bone pain down at the coccyx itself um, and tenderness when you press typically onto the bone itself. Um, whereas a pilonidal cyst, as I'll show you in the illustration here, is not down at the bone. It's basically in the soft tissue structure. So you can see this you know, swelling here. Um, so often with a pilonidal cyst, uh, number one uh, is that they're not tender directly on the bone. Um, number two is that they may feel this lump or bulge because they have this collection of fluid. A cyst is just a bag of fluid. Think about like a tiny water balloon just beneath the skin there. Um, so that is uh, the nature of a cyst shown in yellow on the illustration here. Uh, and basically, um, as that fluid starts to collect, um, you get a lot of irritation. You may get redness of the skin over the area. Uh, so it starts to, you know, look something, you know, like that. Uh, and the other thing is that the cyst can start to try to find its way out. So the, uh, the fluid will start, the pressure will start to build up uh, and the fluid starts to tunnel its way out towards the edge of the skin. And then at the skin you may see a little bit of a pimple over the area and it may burst open. And when it bursts open, it oozes or lets out all of that gunk, that junk that's in there, all of that debris. Uh, what's in there? Well, there's fluid, as we mentioned. Um, often there's, um, you know, uh, debris like uh, bits of hair uh, can be in there as well. Um, in fact, pilonidal means nest of hair is the medical term. Um, but basically, uh, all of that stuff starts to ooze out. And when it does, it's really irritating to the skin. So again, you'll get more redness on the skin from a pilonidal cyst. You'll get itching of the skin. Uh, you may get a rash of the skin just from being exposed to all of that stuff. Uh, and you may, it may start to uh, smell uh, badly as well, um, especially if this is infected, in which case it's not just a pilonidal cyst, it's a pilonidal abscess, an actual infection in the area. Um, so, so that's the things about a pilonidal cyst, whereas with tailbone pain, coccyx pain, typically you don't feel a substantial lump. Uh, you don't get the redness on the skin usually. Uh, you don't get the rash and the itching. Those are not typical for musculoskeletal mechanical coccyx pain or tailbone pain. Um, other things that are different, the treatments are, are uh, very different. Uh, for uh, treatment for tailbone pain, coccydinia, um, you know, I have a whole, I have a whole book you can, uh, you can get uh, on Amazon or at uh, tailbonebook.com. Uh, you know, there's 272 pages in here all about uh, workup and treatment uh, for uh, tailbone pain. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, so that's a lot and I have a lot of uh, videos and things online already about tailbone pain. But within the book, I think I have maybe two sentences or so about pilonidal cysts in the area um, just to keep a lookout for them. Um, so really the reason I'm doing this video is to um, add some additional info. Um, I do not treat pilonidal cysts directly. Uh, so if you have a pilonidal cyst, 
don't make the, uh, the long trip to come and see me the way that uh, many people do for tailbone pain. See your local primary care physician or perhaps a, a local uh, general surgeon. Uh, usually they will be able to treat a pilonidal cyst very, very well. Um, the treatment really depends um, if, if it's mild, you know, sometimes just uh, soaking in a warm bath or uh, putting warm compresses uh, can help that to, you know, ease some of that pressure or get rid of or ooze out some of that uh, junk. Uh, if it's really problematic, one of the things you'll want to do is uh, certainly when you're in consultation with your physician, see about whether it makes sense to actually, you know, cut it open, incision and drainage, uh, you know, in order to, and there's, a, and there's different techniques, marsupialization, etc. There's ways to cut it open and drain that junk out of there uh, so that hopefully uh, not only you relieve the pressure and get it out, but that it does not come back because sometimes with a pilonidal cyst, the fluid can come back and build up again. Um, so uh, so this, the treatment then is really, it's a, typically a relatively minor outpatient surgery uh, to have uh, that area opened up for a pilonidal cyst. Um, if it's infective, it's a, if it's a pilonidal abscess, uh, things may get a little more involved and certainly uh, antibiotic treatment, et cetera, um, you know, becomes important. Um, so anyway, that's uh, a, a couple of minutes just talking about um, what is a pilonidal cyst, um, how is it different from uh, coccyx pain or tailbone pain, so that um, you know if you have a pilonidal cyst, you should be treated or evaluated for a pilonidal cyst. If you have a tailbone problem, you should be treated or evaluated uh, you know, by someone you know, with expertise in treating tailbone problems. Uh, if you want more information, certainly uh, you can uh, find me online at www.tailbonedoctor.com, uh, or uh, certainly, as I mentioned, you can get a copy of the book. Um, uh, there's an ebook uh, that you can get on Amazon. You can get the hard copy book on Amazon. Um, I'm even at the time that I'm making this video, I'm actually uh, giving away the hard copy of the book for free. Um, you just pay for shipping and handling. That you would do through uh, in the United States. That's all, that uh, that's available. Uh, and for that, you would do through uh, www.tailbonebook.com. Um, so lots of ways for you to get information. I'm a big believer in um, empowering patients uh, to learn as much as you can about your medical conditions um, so that in consultation with your uh, treating physicians uh, that you can make the best decisions possible in, in your medical care. Um, so that's all for now. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have uh, questions or thoughts on this topic, um, certainly post them uh, down below, and I look forward to reading them. Okay, bye-bye now.